Okay, so this is the second video about lists. Uh, one important other thing we can do with lists is to uh, loop over them. So I showed you a simple, I said for i in range right, 10, we can print i. Okay, range is actually something called an iterator, which is a more advanced Python structure that we're not going to get into. But let's say we have a list of cats, right? And so our cats are Tabby, Calico, um, Black, uh, Spotted, Persian. I'm not actually sure of the many kinds of cat. Maybe I have wild <laughs> as a kind of cat. Okay, but what we can do is we can actually say for cat in cats, we can print it. Print cat. And that loops through this list, assigns it to this temporary variable cat, and prints it here. This cat could be anything, by the way. This could just be for x in cats. Okay, or Y, or C, or whatever you want. Okay, but that'll print out the elements of your list. So that's super useful. You might also want to operate on the list. So I showed you the list comprehensions. All right, so we can make a new list called um, Dark Cats, which equals. And this is the basic format, x for x in cats. Okay, or you can use c for c, it doesn't matter. But what we want to do is transform it in some way. Right, so, so there's two ways to do that. One is to have a function here affecting c. And one is to have a filter. So here we can do if c, and then we can do this in function, which checks if it's in another list. So which cats are dark, a tabby cat is dark, a black cat is dark, and I think that's basically it. So now if we look at this dark cats list, maybe there's another kind, right? Leopard, um, panther. I guess a leopard is not really very dark, is it? Maybe we'll call this a uh, tiger something. So now what it does is it loops through cats and it checks whether the value C is in this other list. And only if it is, does it give it in the final version. So now we have filtered dark cats for membership in this other list. Okay. Another option, of course, is like cats with, cats with T in the name. Okay. We can do the same thing, except here we're going to now have a function that assesses whether or not it has a T. How do we do that? We can do a few different ways. One way is to do like this. Okay. If T in C. Now that's this T in C is essentially the same in treatment, but this is now using it for the strings. Okay. Another option is to um, is to blank them out, but leave them in the list. Okay, so another option might be to say cats with t, we can have a function here, and this can say c if t in c, else uh, not a t cat. And what that'll do is that'll walk through our list. and modify it in this way. Okay, so this is sometimes useful to do this in line. Sometimes you might want a function. 
right? The function can do some kind of arbitrary thing. For example, it's uh, we'll call this get cat name length of some string. Maybe it's s, and we will return s. Okay. Or even better, we can get some crazy cat name length. And this will be if t and s. What do we want to do? If there's a t in s, let's double it. Okay, so return two times len s, else return len s. And you can do these return statements this way, by the way, or you can consolidate them in a variable like so, and then return out. Okay, you can also make this a lot simpler. You can, by setting it as a default value, out equals len s, and then you only have this. Okay, this is a shorthand times equals two, and a shorthand for out equals out times two. So we can take this function and we can pass it in here in the same way. So now we can have for C and cats, and then we can see this output here. Okay, so we've counted the name length, but then we multiply it by two if there's a T in there. So you get the idea. The possibilities are basically endless. And you can use these in or not in operators to work with the strings. Um, you can also uh, assign things uh, if you want all at once, which is pretty fun. So for example, you can do um, let's say you have a several different variables to assign and before you start an optimization problem you can do XYZ equals 10, 100, 1000 or even better you could do 10 to the X no X isn't good 10 to the i for i in range 1. And you can write 4 to get three values here. This will give you 1, 2, and 3. I usually write this myself as 3 plus 1 to make it explicit to me when I'm reading code that this is the last value. So now if I print x, print y, and print z, you'll see that I get those numbers there. Yet another possibility is enumerating through lists, and that's a case where we want to actually act on the integer index. Okay, so let's go back to our cats list. If I do for I C and enumerate cats, then I can print. the index and the name. All right, this obviously is trivial here, but you may find it useful when you are uh, assigning things where their index actually has some intrinsic meaning to it. You can also interact with lists with the random libraries as is shown here. So random is part of the standard library. I tend to use the NumPy randomization uh, wherever possible. Okay. Finally, you can find the index of a list, right? So this enumerate gives you all of them, uh, but you may also be interested in finding the index. So for example, we could do cats.index of tabby, and it will tell us it lives in space zero. 
Okay. If we reverse cats, right? We do cats equals sorted cats, reverse equals true. Oops, that's not in quotes, that's the true value. Okay. And now we do cats.index of tabby. We'll see that it's changed. Okay, so what happened here? Well, we did reverse sort. So we started with wild and we're in descending alphabetical order. So Python knows automatically if you have numbers to sort or strings to sort, it defaults accordingly. But you have to be aware of what that automatic sort order is. Um, and you can run into some complications. So first off, we saw an error when trying to sort lists of different objects that didn't have a natural inequality. But you also want to be careful if you're sorting strings of numbers because then it will default to alphabetical sorting instead of numerical. So for example, if I sort uh, this list of range 11, this is the numbers one through uh, 0 through 10, uh, you're going to see something kind of interesting uh, if we make those into strings. Okay, so we need to do a list here, but we can do string of x for x in range 11. By the way, if you get too many nested parentheses and brackets, you can always do this trick where you space things out. So this may be a little easier to see. Okay, so what's happened here is we now have a case where because these are strings, we get 10 after 1 because this is an alphabetical sort instead of a numeric sort. Okay, and one way to fix that, of course, is the thing we did with FizzBuzz in one of the earlier lectures where we could do zfill2. Now, because everything has the same number of decimal places, the two sort orders are equivalent. Again, just one of many things to be aware of when you're programming. Uh, it will only be useful at that moment when you're doing some automatic variable creation in your data analysis and you create some crazy bug because you forgot about it. So if you can at least go back and remember that this is one source of error, then you'll be in pretty good shape.